he told me, and he doesn't remember, that I would never, ever make it in the business. I should just give everybody it up. Else, everybody else, doing? Everybody, whatever. And everybody looked at me like, what the hell? And I just sat down. Right. Uh, then, obviously, when I sat down, I happened to sit in Dean Malenko's chair. And he kicked the chair and kicked me out of it. Taz, Taz hated me. Taz hated everybody, but Taz hated me because I was such a different... I wasn't a tough guy. I really have to pee, but I can't get up until right. the end of the show because Taz would be sitting there like this wide. <laughs> <laughs> he, wa he wasted so much energy just keeping his eye on me and trying to browbeat me. Stevie Flamingo, Stevie the Body, Stevie Polo. Right. And, and, you know, Raven had given him the outfits, so I was wearing them on, on TV, and they started airing these little vignettes with Joey putting it over, like, oh, my God. Oh, it gave me about a week's notice, saying, you're going to cut a promo with the arena and, and introduce him, and you're going to do a great job. Probably the initial impressions a lot of people have of him, that this guy is really smart, and he's been in the business for a long time, and I'm going to learn from him. But, man, he's a dick. You know, Scotty's been on these shoot interviews. He talked about his his demons. I mean, he wasn't exactly in the right mind. He wasn't exactly himself. He was my mentor in a lot of ways. You know, I, I just carried his bags, did whatever he needed, even even outside of the ring, just to try to to learn the business. But he would show up for the shows, and you were there. We were supposed to be there at 6, 6.30, and sometimes earlier, and Raven would show up at 7.30, 7.45, and I was driving. I got all these impressions, the fabulous ones, the, the Baron Von Stevie. I mean, he came up with BWO, but all these other things and these little things that, hey, you're going to do this, and you're going to dance with this girl that's all high in, in Ybor City, and we're going to call you dancing Stevie Richards. That's Raven. Yeah. That's the thing about ECW, too, man. We had we had angles with multiple people. Luna right. and Tommy and the Pitbulls at the same time. We had... Uh, me doing stuff with Francine and Buell. I mean, we were so intertwined in everything. Every, If you think about it, from top to bottom, ECW had intertwining, and then Sandman, yep. intertwining angles where everybody had something to do and could go off here and then come back. And if you think about it, the whole company was one big anger bomb, and Gary slipped, and it looked like it killed mm -hmm. Gary. Um, early in the match, hit me in the head with a chair. And even back then, you didn't put your hands up. If you did, you were... Crucified for doing that. Had no idea how to blade either. That was fun. I was Paulie goes, stop! <laughs> I just kept going like this. <laughs> stop! Scream. Me and Scotty went to the hospital at night too. I think we bonded a little bit more. He said, you proved yourself tonight. You did a great job and I'm proud of you. And Taz comes up to me and he goes, you cut a promo before the match, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you better fucking not say anything that's going to piss me off. And I'm like, Everything I say pisses Eddie you. was amazing, amazing person. It definitely left us too soon. Uh, Johnny left us too soon too, but Johnny was a jerk. Oh. I jumped off the top of the cage and took the ball claw. Now, did something. you have any interaction with Paul behind the scenes? Maybe late night phone calls, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Like I know I used to call, you know, myself really late. And, <laughs> did you talk to him at all? Like he, he would talk to me. He would call me. I'd go up to the studio and learn. And Tommy was getting me over. It was like Tommy was getting me over. Raven was getting me over. I was getting them over. They were getting me. I mean, everybody was just working so symbiotically. It was just so cool. That's another point, too. Everybody always thought it was hardcore and blood and guts and everything. I mean, you talk about a, a storyline. There was no bigger storyline than the stuff that surrounded the Raven Dreamer feud and how it branched off into all this other stuff. And Buell was, I mean, without her, it probably wouldn't even have had the layers. Flock of Seagull shirt, that's how he debuted on TV. Right. And that's how he debuted the Moonsault when I pushed, pushed him up. Sandman was just so careless with that stick uh, you know he would he would actually have a red string and he would tighten it up to make it like a baseball bat uh poor meanie used to get hit across his face paulie his... always constantly kept everybody so motivated it was like we took another step we took another step hey i let you fuck raven and then she grabbed me and she gave me the biggest like french kiss ever i thought taz was intense sabu was super intense and in the back if you didn't know Sabu, and back then I think he was different. Let too. me ask you, why do you think that you didn't get the same respect from the ECW locker room that other guys in your position had? Scott Hawk, I think, contacted Meany. Kevin Nash, though, never met him before. I was in WCW. It was like my first or second night there. I'm like, this is kind of fucked up, guys. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And Ray was like, shut up, just put him up on the cross. And I was like, I don't know if Kurt knew about it because Kurt had just come in afterwards. Um, and quite honestly, I could have been the best thing that ever happened to Kurt Angle. And Terry was so good to me. Like, I'm sitting there. Tax just in his own world, Sam man, and and I'm sitting there like this, and 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 you know shaking my leg, doing the restless leg, bouncy legs thing, and Terry's like, "What are you thinking about, Stevie?" And I go, I, "What the hell am I doing here? Don't worry about that. Just sign it. We'll fill that in later." I go, "No, there's there's nothing here, Paul. You can put this down for a hundred years or zero dollars." And he's like, "What? You don't trust me?" And I was like, "There's nothing here." He was talking up WCW like. 
hey man, you can just sign with them and you you can sign with them and they'll pay for your surgery down the line. Chris Chetty didn't shoot on me. Paul didn't have to do put the energy into uh, massaging my ego and motivating me and then encouraging me. He didn't have to do that. I mean, got his his ear slapped by Taz, and it's like something I personally feel responsible for because I I put him in that spot. The worst it's ever been. He was a monster, man. He was such a jerk off and. I got along with a lot of people in WCW, and Bischoff actually looked at me and said, man, we can make you something like a Shawn Michaels. He saw potential in me. I remember when Tammy wasn't hooked on any of that stuff. She was still, at times, a very terrible person, horrible to people, very condescending. Uh, and from what I see now, she's still that and way. We have this match, and you completely squash me. How are these people ever going to believe me ever again if I go to do it again? And he goes, well, you don't understand, Stevie. He goes, you were just brought in here to be my $85,000 a year job boy cunt bitch or whatever. You're my fucking lackey. Shut your fucking mouth. Do your job or I'll get you. I'll talk to Paige and get you fired. And he goes, well, brother, oh, you know the elbow, little stay. He goes, he, and he said basically he would do it to Paige on purpose every night in the ribs. Wow. And he goes, but I won't do that to you. If I do a horrible savage, I'm sorry. Please don't thumbs down the, the preview video. I said, no. How stupid was I? You know, and I was talking to Paul. And Paul's like, come back here. Come back here. You, we'll, we'll take care of you. We'll recapture everything. And you're you know, a stupid motherfucker. You're basically, you know, you left this company. You come back and you expect us to welcome you. And anything and everything that should have been said to somebody that did what I did. When the door opened to leave the... Uh that little room, what was going through your mind? Were you relieved or did you it wasn't it over? Was over, okay. it wasn't over. Right. And then uh, in the back of my mind, in the back of the back of my mind, I have a neck injury. So you thought, what am I going to do? There's going to be a receipt, and there's going to be some. The only time you really had a conversation with me was when I started the right to censor. There were moments with Bradshaw, even out of the ring, where he was he was okay towards me and, and teaching me some stuff about the way things works around there. Yeah, I didn't take the last ride the best way I could. That's my fault. But, you know, they were tested by the acolytes, too, by the APA. Right. And they knew it, and Bubba t talked to me about it. We reminisce. It's cool when you get to a point and you can reminisce about those days with guys like Bubba and Taz. Edge and Christian were, were resistant of, of me like imitating their gimmick. I remember that specifically. There was at a PTC to get guys like Godfather, Val Venus, all these, these sexually explicit gimmicks. Jim Ross said one time in the meeting that he goes, you see these two people over here? These are two people that you need to model not only your in-ring work, but your outside lifestyle. You know who these two people were? <laughs> China and X-Pac. And Chris makes them the remark, Hey man, I you know maybe I'll write a book someday. And Hunter goes, well, what's the book going to be? How to lose forty pounds in six weeks? Right. I wouldn't blame Chris if he punched him right in the face and said, "Fuck you." And I went up to Vince one time and I asked him, "Why am I not getting an opportunity?" I was going to ask you. That and he goes, time. "I don't know. I'll look into it." And I was like, "You're the owner of a fucking company. You're going to look in. Who's who do you have to ask?" I said that to him. Who do you have to ask? On the apron, kiss the GM because I was the GM of Stevie Night Heat, and I put on a chef hat. He's just never. He just never liked me. Only one agent ever threw me under the bus. And we'll get to that in a second. I'm like, really bad. Ric Flair and Sergeant Slaughter are my top two moments in WWE as far as mark out moments. My nose was under my eye. They put it back over here. Looking at Bradshaw, and I'm looking at Meany. I mean, he's kind of playing it so up. Sabu's dead, but I can't really help him. So I'm still going to go to the gym, and I'll be back. I'll right. still be there. He's dead. See, Sabu, his legs are in the water. His arms are kind of on the ledge, and he's laying, like, kind of, not face down, but his head on the side. You know, I, was, I was looking at a, uh, an Xbox 360 accessory, right. like an expensive backpack, and I was, like, talking to him, and he was like, we're going to have to let you go, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, put, it <laughs> put it back on the rack. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I don't have to say that. I'm not going to buy that now. I respect what Mick has done. I loved working him throughout ECW and uh, WWE also. In TNA, some we did some stuff on one end with the Dr. Stevie and the Biss thing, and then the other end, he's a pleasure to work with, and he never hurt me in the ring. Basically, Bischoff and Hogan and all these other guys are just milking her, for, they're milking her for her money. She's a money mark. That's all she is. And I say that with the utmost respect to Dixie Carter as a human being, that she's being taken for a ride. In TNA, you don't work, you don't get paid, at least the deal I was on per appearance. Russo is there, and he goes, and he literally said the thing that, like, in wrestling, is the biggest fucking kind of kind of fuck you as well. He goes, oh, hey, Stevie, I didn't see you there. I enjoyed the fact that I can make Abyss a monster again, that I had the talent to be 
a real heel? Is that weird? No, that's, not that, at all. That's definitely falls into the category. I don't think anybody's giving you that answer. Like, right. what's the thing that you don't know about uh, Billy Jack Haynes? Uh -huh. I love cats.